I'm Eddie Muller, giving thanks that we're together once again in Noir Alley. Now, if you've seen a lot of film noir, you're probably thankful for never having met the woman of your dreams, because you know it's just not going to end well. Today's film is a representative case in point. It's The Woman in the Window, released by RKO in 1944. This movie holds a significant place in the development of noir, as 1944 was the crucial year in what I call Hollywood's only organic artistic movement. Double Indemnity, Laura, Murder My Sweet, and Phantom Lady were all released that year, and all of them, along with The Woman in the Window, were box office successes, igniting the studio's output of darker, more mature material. Of those five essential noir films, four were directed by European emigres, Billy Wilder, Otto Preminger, Robert C. Admack, and the most famous of them, Fritz Lang, the director of today's movie. Wilder, Preminger, and C. Admack were still relatively early in their brilliant careers in 1944, but Fritz Lang was in the midst of a long, difficult period, struggling to work steadily and somehow maintain his reputation as one of the world's great directors. He may have created such classics as Metropolis in 1927 and M in 1931, but when he came to Hollywood in the mid-30s, Lang was not welcomed with open arms. His arrogance and autocratic style cut no mustard with studio heads who saw him as just one more talented but big-headed director who liked to spend money and be rough on his cast and crews. So while Billy Wilder found a cozy home at Paramount, and Otto Preminger's detente with Daryl Zanuck kept him working at 20th Century Fox, and Robert Siadmak was quietly making masterpieces at Universal, Fritz Lang was lucky to get four higher jobs as a freelancer. Now, time has burnished his reputation, but here's the truth about his status in 1944. Without Nunnally Johnson, Lang might never have been a part of the film noir movement. The Woman in the Window was Johnson's first independent production as a writer-producer. Poor kid from Georgia, he'd schooled himself enough to become a reporter and columnist for major New York papers, as well as a prodigious short story writer for the Saturday Evening Post. In Hollywood, he became a confidant and collaborator to Daryl Zanuck, and he reached the Hollywood Heights by adapting a pair of John Steinbeck novels for the screen, The Moon is Down, and the all-time classic, The Grapes of Wrath. Now, with so much success under his belt, Johnson started his own production company, International Pictures, in partnership with Fox production executive Bill Goetz. For their first show, the partners chose a 1942 suspense novel, Once Off Guard, the most successful book published by a little-known crime writer, J. H. Wallace. It tells the story of a married milk toast professor beguiled by a femme fatale and the horrors that result from what is, in reality, a fairly innocent liaison. Nunnally Johnson's adaptation lightens up the book's spiral into darkness without sacrificing any of the screw-tightening suspense. Johnson chose Lang to direct the film, feeling the director's predilection for darkness and doom would counterbalance his more humorous and ironic instincts as a writer. It was also Nunnally Johnson's idea to cast Edward G. Robinson, an inspired choice that changed the tenor of Robinson's career. I was warned. You mean you're afraid of me? No, 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 no. it's not that, but uh, I was warned against the siren call of adventure. Born in Romania as Emanuel Goldenberg, the actor grew up on Manhattan's Lower East Side and skyrocketed to fame as mobster Rico Bandello in the 1931 hit Little Caesar. In the decade following that legendary performance, Robinson usually played some variation of the banty rooster tough guy, eventually to the point of caricature. On the heels of his surprising supporting role in Billy Wilder's Double Indemnity, Robinson played a weak and vulnerable character in The Woman in the Window, one that many colleagues said was far closer to the actor's true self. He would plumbed this weakness time and again in film noir, and it kept his career afloat during the 1940s. Scarlet Street, The Red House, 
Night has a thousand eyes, house of strangers. Even Arthur Miller's All My Sons were noir-stained films that allowed Robinson to show his amazing range and sensitivity. And of course, in 1948, there was Key Largo, in which he brought Little Caesar back for an encore. Now, reportedly, the original choice to play the woman in the window was Tallulah Bankhead. But when schedules didn't mesh, the role was offered to an actress Fritz Lang had worked with previously on the picture Manhunt, Joan Bennett. She'd spent the 1930s as a blonde ingenue with pencil-lined eyebrows and bee-stung lips, but this film essentially revamped the 34-year-old actress, turning her into an iconic 40s femme fatale, a character she'd embody again in Lang's Scarlet Street, only to transcend the type in other noirs, such as The Woman on the Beach, Hollow Triumph, and The Reckless Moment. For the role of Height, the blackmailer, Lang brought back an actor who'd made a vivid impression in his previous film, Ministry of Fear. Dan Duryea had a unique way with villains, giving them a buoyant glee that made being bad seem terribly appealing, at least for audiences. Nothing but cash. Five grand. Cash. Duryea's deviousness was so delicious the public couldn't get enough. He basically played this smarmy character for the rest of the 40s, making him one of the most dependably despicable regulars in film noir. Now, although the film was a big box office hit and earned unanimously good reviews, many critics found one huge fault in it. And therein hangs a tale, which we'll discuss after we've watched one of the essential movies in the history of Hollywood noir. Let's take a look at The Woman in the Window. <laughs> 